Hello, and welcome to our show for the love of animals. We are delighted that you joined us today. All you animal lovers, gather around because we've got a great show. I'm Darlene Pickford. And I'm Greg Bauer, and we want to tell you about a couple of upcoming shows. Okay. One on hunting dogs, oh. which we've had several requests for, and the yes. other one on, you came up with a stra this strange title, Real Men Love Cats. Because real men do love cats. <laughs> and dogs also. <laughs> and I might explain our, our two little uh, uh, companions today right. decided they would sleep in at home today. And, That's right. And uh, so they're, they're, they're watching on channel two. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyway, so what's on tap for today, Darlene? Well, Greg, we have a very important topic today. And so mm -hmm. gather around and, and get your notepads. Housebreaking Fido. Okay. You and I have struggled with that over the years, <laughs> and sometimes we weren't the most successful, but we're, we're getting there because we are teachable. Why mm -hmm. don't you introduce our guest? We'll, we'll be happy to. Our guest this afternoon is no stranger to you if you've been with us for a while, Sally Moore, who's from Paducah here, and she's a local dog trainer and uh, has got some real good tips for us today that you'll want to make notes on. And you may want to play this show several times to be <laughs> sure that it's right. So, Sally, thank you so much for coming uh, to see us today. And, thank you uh, for having me. I'm glad thanks. to be back. Yes, we're glad to have you. Well, tell us about your fur family. We have three right now. We have a yellow lab that's seven, uh -huh. and we have this middle child that I have here, Jam, who's black, and she's a four-year-old, and then I have a youngster that's about a year and a half. And it's another lab. So we've got three labs in the family and a cat. Oh, okay. And they all stay in the house. They all get along. Oh, my goodness. All are housebroken. Oh. <laughs> that's an important thing. Yes. <laughs> and that's what we want to find out right. some things about today. Right. Right. How did you evolve into this dog training expertise? I don't know. My dad had um, bird dogs growing up, and I hung out with the dogs a lot, and I liked it. And as I got older, I wasn't sure what to do, and I ended up doing this. Mm -hmm. And I like it. Okay. I enjoy well, it. Well, we are, cer we are certainly glad that you do enjoy it because we need all the information that we can get. Um, in starting off, are there particular breeds of dogs that are easier to housebreak than others? I don't know about easier, but some of your smaller dogs, your Yorkies, uh -huh. your miniature toy poodles, your, your teacups, your little dogs can be harder to housebreak. Because they're smaller, their bladders are smaller, they need more in and out, in and out, oh, in and out, that type okay. of thing. Uh -huh. Your bigger dogs, your labs, your boxers, you know, their lilies or their bladders are a little bit bigger, but you still have to use the same method. And if you'll use it, it, it works. Okay, okay. It works. but if, if I'm going to have a small dog, then I've got to realize that it, it, its bladder it is smaller. Yes. And yes. it may need to go out more. More frequently, absolutely. Okay. How about the age of a dog? A puppy versus a five-year-old or a 12-year-old dog? Well, depending on your sex, you might say, you know, some of your older dogs, especially a male, uh -huh. if he's used to marking, he might come in the home and start marking because males do that. They want to mark their territory, so they might hike their leg and pee on a couch or do something. Mm -hmm. um, but then again, some of your dogs, let's say you did a rescue or you adopted and it was an outside dog, it's very unnatural for them to go in the house. They want to go out because they've been used to that. Uh -huh. Now, if you start with a puppy, then you've got a regiment that you can follow, but there's all sorts of angles and all sorts of things that enter into this picture of housebreaking. You have to look at that individual dog. And, and one thing we found over the years that when you ask a person if you're going to get a dog, <laughs> is the dog housebroken? The answer is yes, absolutely. Yeah, and sometimes uh, it is, and sometimes, no, yeah, sometimes, sometimes it is not. <laughs> there are degrees of uh, the, uh, truth to that yes, answer, right? Yes, yes, there is. <laughs> there is, absolutely. Well, well now, revisit this inside, outside. An outside dog that's brought inside uh, is easy, might be easier to Because as a rule, it's not natural for them to go in. They've been used to going outside. Mm -hmm. Okay. Whereas you get a dog that's been strictly inside, going on little pads, it's not maybe as natural to go out. Okay. So okay. you have to look at that individual puppy, male, female, age, okay. size. It's just different for all of them. Mm -hmm. when a, you know, when a dog is in a shelter, our shelters are overcrowded. Mm -hmm. It's very rare that somebody's going to take that dog out three times mm -hmm. a day. Am mm -hmm. I right? It's, it can be hard because they've got, it, they're overwhelmed. They've got so many. Exactly. Yes. Yeah, yeah, right. And I, I know they mean to. Right. So if I get a dog that's been confined in a shelter... Uh, is there, are there any guidelines or anything to expect? 
you might they might be more prone to go to the bathroom in the house. So I would be more prone to maybe do crate training, teach them to be in a crate or a confined area, a laundry room or a small area, and then take them out more frequently, take them out the same door, take them to the same location. That's crucial. Let them know where you want them to go and leave a little bit of their stuff there so they can go back and say, oh, that's mine and that's where I went before. Mm -hmm. So in other words, if they do come from a shelter, you might need to expect to really have to pay attention. Yes. yes. You know, you, you can't just go off and leave, go no, to work no, and come back no, home no. and say, well, this house, this dog's supposed to be house broke. No, no, so they, need a confined, they need a confined controlled area. They don't need the run of the house because they're not responsible yet. Even mm -hmm. they may be five years old, you still have to treat them like they're a baby because they haven't been through this gamut of things before. Yeah, and, and sometimes we get a dog and we don't know anything about its background. You don't know, and, and a lot of your rescues, they have some baggage. I'm not going to yes. say it's all bad, but no. don't presume that it's well-behaved, well-trained, <laughs> great with people, great with other dogs, won't jump on people. There's issues or the dog a lot of times wouldn't be there. You know, some have to just give them up and some just can't handle them or some had another dog they didn't get along with, some didn't like kids. There's all sorts of stuff. So just go in knowing that. Yeah. And one thing I found, uh, patience is something that has to come from the owner, am I right? Absolutely. Absolutely. If you feel yourself losing your temper, put the dog away. <laughs> it doesn't serve any purpose. You've got to be patient. Mm -hmm. I don't, again, I'm going to stress, I don't care if it's a six-week-old puppy or a five-year-old dog. You've got to treat it like it's a baby. You're bringing it into your home. This is my home. These are my rules. This is how we're going to work this. And show me that dog or puppy what, exactly what you want. Yeah. So in other words, you're right. Remember, treat it as if it were a baby, yes. a child. Yes. With the same patience yep. and diligence. Absolutely. And all. Absolutely. Okay. I think that's crucial. Uh, yeah. And that's sometimes hard on a busy family. It is. It yep. can be. So you need to think about the dog you're getting. Do you want to get that dog that runs in the field, these pointers? Not necessarily. So maybe you need a smaller dog, a house dog. Now, some of these dogs have to have jobs. German Shepherds, they're herding dogs. Labrador Retrievers, they're retrievers. Think about what you're getting and how it's going to fit your family and your house or your apartment or your space. Mm -hmm. You've got to consider all that, not just it's cute. Uh, yeah. It's pretty. <laughs> It's cute, and I like to take it home. And, and think about your temperament. You know, I had somebody recently that got a husky, and the gentleman was very laid back, uh -huh. very low-keyed. Huskies husky. are not. Oh, no. And so that was a funny blend, you know, and I was like, how'd you come up with this, you know? And his mom said, I asked him the same question. <laughs> <laughs> so research what that dog's job is naturally, uh -huh. if it's a herding breed or a protection breed or a terrier that likes to go dig and root and see if that's going to fit to your family. Shih Tzus must like to dig because Wicket, our <laughs> dog, Wicket loves I think a lot to... of your little dogs do because their noses are closer to the ground. Mm -hmm. okay. And so they pick up all those little smells. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 That's, that's Wicket, <laughs> our, our dog. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, we're getting an awfully good start so. on things. But, uh, it's time for us now to take a short break and hear about another wonderful little dachshund known as Lucy. Okay. So give a listen. Lucy is a nine-year-old black and tan dachshund. Lucy is possibly one of the most spoiled animals on the planet. She came to live with Gail and Tom Butler as soon as she was weaned from her mother. Gail and Tom tell her that she won the puppy lottery when she was their pick of the litter. The plan from the beginning was to train Lucy to be a sweet, obedient girl. However, it was Tom and Gail who were trained by Lucy. Lucy does have three tricks. She can sit, stay, and lay down. With the prospect of a treat, Lucy will do all three in order without prompting. Lucy's favorite pastime activities are sleeping, eating, and playing with her toys, which she knows by name. Lucy's tail is certainly a happy tail. Welcome back. <laughs> yeah, I think you'll find uh, here that Lucy was a very, very lucky little dog oh, to have such a good home. So uh, It sounds that way, mm -hmm. Greg. Well, we're visiting this afternoon with Sally Moore, who is a dog trainer here in Paducah, and we're talking about housebreaking. Fido. <laughs> and that's never a topic that uh, has a perfect no, answer, no. as we're beginning to find out. So, Sally, if, if our viewers would like to get more information, how can they contact you? They can call me at 270-488-3848. Uh, Okay. And I'd be glad to help any way I can. Okay. Well, that is so generous of you. Sure. Yes. Really appreciate that. Okay. 
take us through a kind of an outline, step by step now, you know, because we're, we're students now, of training, uh, training FIDO uh, to housebreak FIDO. Okay. You know, if, if I was working with a puppy or, or even an older dog, puppies need to go out more frequent. We know that. Okay. And I, I like crate training. Um, I want the right size crate for that particular dog. They need to be able to stand up, turn around, lay down, you'll sleep. Okay. Um, and properly ventilated area. And I usually put my crates in kind of a low keyed setting, not so much stimulation, not in the middle of the living room, not in the middle of the busy of traffic, traffic area. area. Right. Not where the TV is. Exactly, exactly. Okay. Um, in a quiet kind yes, of area. Okay. Yes. And there's plastic crates, there's wire crates, whichever the person prefers. It really doesn't make any difference. Um, you're going to monitor that water intake for that dog because what goes in and in and in will come out and out and out. So let's monitor while we're trying to house break. And so in other words, don't leave the water out no. all the time. No. So no. you only put the water bowl down. What would you recommend? You might do it with their feeding and, and maybe one other time. And then feeding needs to be consistent too and routine because again, Every time that dog eats, it's going to stimulate to use the bathroom. Right. Well, if he gets a bite and an hour later gets a bite, comes back, that keeps everything stimulated. So a okay. young puppy, 7 to 16 weeks, I'd probably feed her 12 weeks, three times a day. Okay. Breakfast, lunch, or breakfast and dinner, light lunch. Mm -hmm. An older dog, breakfast, dinner, okay. two okay. meals a day. But try to keep that consistent. And you can adjust it to your schedule. If you don't get in until 6 o'clock, then feed them at 6.30. You don't have to rush home at 4.30. You've got to adjust it to your schedule. Okay. Get them out frequently, and I'll take that. I'll use a bathroom term. You can use go. You can use potty. You can use go hurry. Do your business. Take a break. I don't care what you use. One person used rock and roll once. <laughs> that was a, and it worked. That was a bathroom term. So it's that repetition. All right, but you would whatever bathroom word you want to train them yes. with. Don't make it a common one. Right. Okay. It's a separate thing that strictly delegates. She knows go hurry. This dog of mine. That's what her term is. Go hurry. Okay. So when I go to get the babies, I'll say, Come on, it's time to go hurry. We need to go outside and go hurry. And a little young puppy, six, seven weeks, I'll probably pick up and carry because as soon as they step out of that crate, they spring a leak. Mm -hmm. Okay. When All they right. get a little bit bigger, then you can just coax them and I go out the same door and I go to the same area in the yard to let them understand that's their place. Oh, okay. Now, let's say you've had the puppy out and the puppy gets has a little accident in the house. What do we do there? Mm -hmm. If you catch him, I'll verbally reprimand him. Uh-uh, no, sir, that is ugly. You potty outside or you go hurry outside. What a bad boy, blah, blah, blah. I'll take a paper towel, sop that pee up or pick that poop up. I'll take it with me. I'm verbally reprimanding it. Don't swat butts and rub noses. Don't do any of that, but verbally, I, 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 what a bad boy. Mm -hmm. As soon as I get to that door and I have that paper towel with me, remember with that okay. bathroom problem. And as soon as I get outside, then I turn into Mary Poppins. What a good boy. <laughs> Let's go potty outside. What a good boy. And I'll take that paper towel and I'll put it down in that area. The, the same what area a good that you boy. want. That's where you go potty and I'll even give them a treat. And okay. they're like, dang, I like that girl a whole lot better outside <laughs> than I do in. So, well, I like your pee better out there, too. So I'm showing that extreme difference. Okay. I do love you, but I don't like certain behavior. You can't go to the bathroom in the house. Okay. And but you, you would never hit no, or no, squat I, I don't. or put their nose in no, it? No, I don't agree with that. I just verbally reprimand them. Okay. And I always give them a treat when they potty outside. In some the people spot want to bring, that you want them to. Mm -hmm. Some people want to bring them back in and give them the treat. Oh, no, that's... Well, guess what? Sooner I get back in, I get the treat. Sure. I'll just go a little and finish inside. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> I always give my treats <laughs> outside. And I make them go potty first, and then we'll go play. And you may have to use a leash starting out, you know? You're that, gonna that's go a potty. good idea, anyway. You're going to go potty first, absolutely, depending on your area, absolutely. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, yeah. but I'll, you need to go potty first, and then we'll go play. And if they say they don't go potty, we're going to go back in the crate for, crate for five minutes. We'll try this again. And they soon learn, huh. If I don't go potty, I don't get, that's right. You need to go potty first. We'll take care of that, and then we can play with the ball or do whatever, mm -hmm. go back in or do whatever we need to do. And you would leave their stuff outside, mm -hmm. right, mm -hmm. in the same yep. area? I would leave some, you know, a little out there so they can go out there and smell that that's their area and that's their stuff. Yeah. Oh. And, of course, some people want to use pads. Okay, yeah, tell us. You have to be careful with pads because that, that first impression of a puppy is crucial, and you're teaching them, this is what I want you to use the bathroom on right there in this house, which really is not what you want to do. No. But you're thinking maybe that's the best thing, especially for a little miniature Yorkie, or, and there's an inch of snow outside, and it's cold. So I'll tell people, if you are going to do that, well, again, we're going to delegate that area. 
We're going to use a little laundry or something, and we're only going to put one pad down. Don't put one in the bathroom, one in the den. One, that's going uh -huh. to teach puppy to go Wherever anywhere puppy. in the house. Uh -huh. That's what you want, right? Wrong. So you have to be careful with those pads. Well, if I lived in a high rise or maybe if I was a senior citizen mm -hmm. and I wanted to keep my animals, yes. I could see maybe using those. Use, you know, yes, because that I disabled. could understand. Yeah, or you're disabled and you can't get around real well. That is very true. That's okay, but use it in a delegated area when you start out so they understand then to go back to that laundry room or go back to that corner in the kitchen and use that pad. Yeah. Some people have used a, a trail of pads. Uh -huh. oh. What about that? I I think it just turns into go anywhere you want to in the house. Mm, okay. I just think it, it confuses them. Okay. Okay. How about rainy weather? Take an umbrella. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny, a lot a lot of dogs don't like to go out no, in, in the rain. No, they don't. It, they don't. It, it's uh, the owners that don't like to and go out. The owners out. don't <laughs> like to. I know owners don't also, but, but I mean if you you have to. And if they don't go and they're not totally housebroken yet, put them back in the crate. Mm -hmm. Um and see if you can wait it out. Okay. It's, yeah. It, now, let's suppose we crate them. At, would you recommend crating them at night? I, I do crate mine at night, and if it's done properly, they love their crates. Because it's, it's security. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, their little den. This year and a half old of ours, he still, when I say it's time to go to bed, he runs and gets in his crate. Um, so there's nothing wrong with that. As long as it's properly ventilated, X number of hours, you know, don't go off and leave a dog in a crate mm -hmm. 10, 12, 14 hours. That's ridiculous. You can't do that. In, in so. In the case with Wicket, uh, That's right. if we're gone or something like that, all I have to sure. do is put his crate out there. The Wicket, he so, comes, runs right exactly. in. Exactly, they it. love it. So with you did a good toy. job with it, yeah. and so he, they like it. Toy, and yeah. it's their little den. It's mm -hmm. you know we have one in the house. We just the door is off, and we'll find one of the girls or Jed or somebody in there laying down taking a nap because they like it. Uh -huh. It's their safe place. Oh. It's like our bed. You know, we go to bed at night. We want somewhere to go in too. Uh -huh. Well, they do too. Oh. Okay. Okay, what if you have a, a puppy or a senior dog that makes a mistake? Verbally, uh, even if some people say, well, I didn't catch him, well, they know we didn't do it. Because <laughs> you can start taking that puppy over there and they start barking a little and trying to draw him back because they know, oh, they found it. So I'll again <laughs> verbally take him, you see that? Uh-uh, what a bad boy. No, sir, you know better than that. You go potty outside. And again, I'm going to verbally reprimand him all the way to that door. And as soon as I get outside, what a good boy. And I've got that paper towel, don't forget, with that poop or that pee on it. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to say, what a good boy. And I'm going to put it down there. And that's where you go potty. And I'm even going to give him a treat. And odds are he will not use the bathroom again because he just did. Mm -hmm. But he's going to think about, I really like that treat. And I'll use a totally separate special treat for that. Uh -huh. That really oh. puts him over the moon. Okay, so <laughs> in other words... If you if you are training them with treats for something else, use a separate kind. Of, okay. Yes. Therefore, they associate getting that treat. So use their and favorite you have to, treat. You have to up the ante and make it worth their while. It's not about us completely. What's in it for me? Mm -hmm. that's, that's what they're thinking. What about me? What's in it for me? Yeah. You know, I occasionally like a chocolate chip cookie myself. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, if you want me to do something, you might bring one. Uh -huh. So I up the ante. In fact, I'll use with puppies, a lot of times I'll use a little bite of a turkey dog because okay. it's soft. They can chew it real quick. Uh -huh. It's meat. They like it, and it gets their attention. Okay. So it makes everything positive. And that's your whole goal is to make everything positive. You can verbally reprimand, but then you come back with that praise, I do love you. I don't like certain behavior. Uh -huh. I can't stress that enough. That's very, very important. This has been some awfully good advice. Oh that gosh, we're if getting I'd just right known now. this years ago. <laughs> <laughs> well, we want to take another short break now. Already? And, uh, I know it. Time we're, we're really just moving, passes. Moving quickly, and this is a little happy tale about a little Siamese kitten named Marvin, and uh, I think you'll enjoy this one. He's a he's a sweet little fellow. So give a listen. Marvin is a male lilac point Siamese cat that is about eight months old. Robert was at the vet to get some cat food when a lady brought Marvin in to see if she could find him a home. She had found him in our driveway and he had fleas and ringworm. And the lady said she would pay for the medication if Robert would take him home. Robert did and Marvin joined five other cats. He loves warm places and the window ledge in the kitchen. He goes everywhere in the house and is about to get a bell around his neck so he can be found. He's always hungry and will eat constantly if allowed. Thanks to Robert, Laura, and Colin, Marvin now has a forever happy home. 
Welcome back. We hope you enjoyed that little uh, neat story about Marvin. Uh, he's going to be a well-loved little cat with that family. He and most definitely <laughs> is, and it's, he may be the small cat in that family, but he seems to be kind of running the household right now. He is into everything, but you know, that's the joy of having a kitten. Mm -hmm. And if you're ever down and depressed or anything, all you have to do is go get yourself a kitten and or you a will puppy. Or a puppy, Either and one. you will soon. You'll be you'll be laughing at, at their antics. So, yeah. best of luck to Marvin and his <laughs> new family. <laughs> well, we're visiting this afternoon with Sally Moore, who is a dog trainer here in Paducah, and uh, you've graciously agreed to give our viewers uh, help if they were willing to Absolutely. call you. And how can they contact you? Call me at two seven zero four eight eight three eight four eight. Okay. And just with anything, any question, don't think that the question is stupid. No. Any question is important, so call. Okay. Pick my brain. Well, thank you so much for volunteering. Absolutely. To do that, we certainly Sally. do appreciate your, your helping our community like this. Absolutely. Okay, it's talking about housebreaking fight up. Let's suppose they've made a mistake. How do I clean it up to help get kind of the, you know, I can clean it up, but the smell is still there? Yeah, and that's what you need to get that smell out because that draws them back sometimes. Yes, right. So you need to use, there's a cleaner called Nature's Miracle. And it's very, very good okay. about taking that smell out. You know, you may sop it up and you may wipe a little bit, but that smell's left behind, especially with urine, and mm -hmm. they tend to go back to that area. So that's what I usually recommend is that Nature's Miracle is pretty good. Is it's there good any stuff. natural household cleaner, baking soap? What, what could I use in, if I couldn't get to that product? Just a good soap and water I think I would use. Okay. Just a good general soap and water diluted and scrub that and s concentrate, you know, soak it a little bit and let that get into that carpet or that wherever it is. And of course, tile or wood floors are gonna be easier to wipe up. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, there's also some stuff called Odaban. It's a cleaner and it's very good. It's very pleasant smelling, but yet it cleans and takes that odor out. That's a good thing to use also. Okay. Don't you think baking soda also helps with the smell? It, it can, yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I know a baking soda just sprinkled on your rugs and vacuumed up, right. you know, can help with the, just the, uh, the pet odor sometimes. Right. Uh, that, that get into your house. Right. I, I've also understood that if you were to, after you've cleaned up the area where there was a problem, if mm -hmm. you put something there, uh, like a, an object or something like that. Put their yes. food bowl. <laughs> uh, but something there so that they, when they come back to that same spot, they say, oh, there's something there. Right. I can't do it there. Yeah. What about that? Yeah, you can do that. Absolutely. You could put anything you wanted there to cover that area and to, to make it not the same as they had used before. And mm -hmm. it is a deterrent. Yeah, absolutely, you can do that. Okay. How long would you say it would take you to train a puppy to be housebroken? Usually okay. I can housebreak a puppy in two to three weeks. Okay. Pretty consistent. Okay. How about an, uh, uh, maybe an older dog that you don't know his background? Would it take more time? It, it might take a little bit longer. It just depends on that dog's personality. You know, if it's shy or timid or if it's outgoing or... Just you're going to have to look at that dog in a general way as to what his attitude's like and kind of go from there. So it could take him from two to two weeks to maybe a month, you know. You just don't know because it's a different, totally different deal. Maybe he's been housebroken before and then they got away from it. You know, some people give up and the dog wins. Yes. And there's another thing <laughs> that makes them, you know. So it just depends on that particular dog, their age, and, and kind of a little bit of history with them. And what, but I still use that same guideline to okay. go through. And, and we talked about earlier about researching the type of dog that you're getting if you have a choice. Yes, absolutely. Um, and that the bigger dog may be a little easier to housebreak than the small dog. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It, it, because they've got larger bladders mm -hmm. and they can handle more. Um, especially puppy-wise, you know, and when you get a little older Yorkie or a little older Westie or a little old, then, then their bladders are bigger and they're more apt to, to do better. But your little puppies, you have to watch that. Mm -hmm. You really do. And again, monitor that water intake and keep that food, you know, on a consistent. Okay. Yeah. As I understand it, the um, barking and housebreaking are probably among the top two reasons why animal uh, dogs are returned to shelters. Mm -hmm. And when you're in a shelter, you know, as, you know, they're very busy. It's it's if a dog is housebroken, it's hard to keep him in that same pattern that he's used to. Yes. So when we do adopt a shelter animal. We, it should be like reviewing or going back to basics, yes, right? Absolutely. Go back and just go over all your housebreaking stuff mm. again that you've done in the past. Just, because you just have to consider that his, this dog doesn't know it. He's just, not been in that routine. 
just assume that even though they tell you they're housebroken, assume they're not. Right. Yeah. And go from there. And be pleasantly surprised. Instead. <laughs> <laughs> and just in case someone is surfing and only gets to the last part of our program, briefly outline to us the basic steps that you recommend for housebreaking. I like to use a crate. Okay. Recommend a crate, well-ventilated area. Monitor the water intake so they're not what it was going constantly and is coming out. Get their food on a schedule, feed them on a schedule. Um, and then frequently offer the outside to them. Use a bathroom term, take a treat, give them a treat outside when they go to the bathroom. And if they make a mistake? Verbally, I'll reprimand them. Even if I didn't catch them, I'll take them to it. Verbally reprimand them all the way. I'll pick up that poop or sop up that pee, take it all the way to the door with me, go out the same door I to the same it's... location. And then as soon as I get outside, I, what a good boy. Everything's <laughs> positive. And so you've got positive and negative. Everything's based on that. Mm -hmm. Positive. There's choices and consequences. Like a split personality. Yeah, there is. It's, Your it's dog might be saying, boy, she's got a split personality, <laughs> but I want to agree with that better one. I'll, I'll go that's poop right. outside. <laughs> I've always said maybe I'm a little schizophrenic. Maybe that's why I do this so well. But, but if everything is based on positive and negative. That you do true. like them, you just don't like certain behaviors. The mm -hmm. hardest thing I get people to do, they want to get man, stay man, or they can't. Yes. And that's not fair. Positive and negative. I do love you. I just don't like that behavior. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. and lots and lots of patience and consistency Absolutely. on the part of the, the, the humans. <laughs> and the training, housebreaking, whatever angle, you've got to have that patience and consistency. And not lose your temper? No. If you feel yourself losing your temper, it can happen. Just yes. put the dog up mm -hmm. and go take a break. It's no big deal. I mean, you're a horrible person, but don't do anything in that moment because you can't get it back. That stays true. You there. can't undo it. No, you just can't. Okay. You just can't. But I'll tell you, we have just gotten a real education today, Darlene. And I think we've got such wonderful, good and advice, and uh, we really appreciate uh, Sally being open to answer, you know, more individualized mm -hmm. questions about this for our audience. I, I mean, and I'm sitting here thinking about our experiences. Oh, we've well, had yes, we do. <laughs> we we've done some good things, and, and we've done, we've done we, not so we good needed things. To, we needed to have heard Sally X number of years ago, right? <laughs> well, exactly. I kind of learned along the way exactly. myself. <laughs> well, that was myself. Each sure. each several years, we learned a little bit more and more. You yes, know. But, and you uh, know, animals I think are stages of your life. Yes. Before marriage, during marriage, before kids, after kids, before retirement. Yes. Mm -hmm. More time, less time, more. There's all sorts of faces, uh, and a, I think they reflect that. That's yes. That's an awfully good analogy. And uh, well, Sally, we'd like to thank you so much for uh, coming and spending time with us this afternoon. And we know that. Sharing uh, your expertise. Yes. Well, I have enjoyed <laughs> and, it. Once and this again. may be a program with our, that our viewers will want to watch more than once because oh, there's so. a lot to absorb. And, so you have that advantage uh, uh, with our viewing schedule. So uh, Great. Anyway, and thank you again so much for I doing that. I have enjoyed that. it. Thank you for having me. Thank you for coming. Darlene? Yes? Uh, it's time to wind it I up know. again. And just like we always have to say, I'm Greg. I'm Darlene. And we want to remind our viewers, give your pet a little extra love today, even and when they make a mistake. That's right. <laughs> and, and every, every day. day. See you next time. Bye.